Hello community, so great that you are back. You know, sometimes you have your LLM and your code here, your agent, your MCP tool use, and it is simply not working. Good news, it is not because of you. We have a solution when the LLM simply fails to operate MCP protocols. So here we have brand new August 11, 2025, a new MCP tool benchmark, plus plus. So a large scale AI agent model context protocol MCP tool use benchmark by the Ant group. And they say, hey, great, we have, as of July 2025, more than 4,000 MCP servers. So now we have a statistic relevant set, so we can run now benchmark and see how good are LLMs if we integrate them with MCP tool calls. And they have two parameters. At first, we have a directed acyclic graph evaluation of the abstract syntax degree. We call this simply the AST DAG accuracy. But what it does is simply it executes here. It looks if the ground truth tool call execution plan is really what the LLM comes up with. So you have a plan to plan comparison, which is great if you just want to have the method. But we have to have a real world result. No? So if we go to the pass at K accuracy, this measures now if the executed result from all the MCP tool calls are correctly aligned with the expected output and evaluated here. Really, is it a result that is the correct result? Now, at first you think, hey, this is great. Look, the AST performance here for the browser, 65%, 72%, 65%, 80%. So you say, yeah, I can work with this. Now in a limited period of time, I even get a correct result back from my MCP tool use. Great. But search yeah, at 50% with GPT-4 Omni, 60% with a Q1 2.5 Max, 70% with a Sonnet. Nice, no? Kimi K2 also 73%. And Q1 3 coda 71, 72%. So you see, okay, so for the plan, everything is great for the planning. But now buckle up because now we're going to have a look at the result performance. Now, the result performance with browser is mediocre 21% for GPT 4 Omni, at least 29% for Q1 3 coda. No, at least almost a third. Yeah. But Sonnet here with 18%, oh, oh. Look at the search result. GPT-4 Omni, 47%, below 50%. My goodness, how can this happen? Map, pay, I mean, look at finance. Have you ever seen on the internet that somebody tells you, hey, an easy way to make money with AI and finance? Look, this is the performance if an LLM is here issuing here two MCP tool use tool call uses you are below 30 percent so careful so let us say the study of this brand new result of this brand new benchmark is mcp tool use is well let's put it this way to be improved don't trust it now you remember this study here by university of illinois university of massachusetts amherst and google cloud ai research and they built Search R1, training LLMs to reason and leverage search engines, so two complexities, with reinforcement learning. Of course, what else? We only have reinforcement learning in AI. Nothing else exists. And if you say, no, the authors here say now from the second study, you know, we noticed something. We noticed that prompting here the advanced LLMs with the reasoning capability, so they're really models that have reasoning, to use search engine, and you know all as search engine, during the inference run is often suboptimal, as the LLM might not fully possess the capability on how to interact with the search engine at all. Now, if you say this about an MCP tool call or any API calls, this is not good. Yeah? And here, just look at the benchmark data here from the first study that I showed you at the beginning of this video. So you see, there is something not working at all. And they say, you know what we do? We have this experimental search R1 now. And if we have to learn something new, if we have to learn the LLM, how to better use, utilize MCP tool calls, what we do? We have to have a learning process and we have only a reinforcement learning. Yeah? So we say, you know what? 
we use RL for multiple search queries during step-by-step -step reasoning with real-time retrieval. Everything from a rack to a search engine. Great. And they say, you know what? The result is there because they tell us search R1 improves the performance here by 24% or 20% over the current rack baselines. 25%, 24% is a good result. So let's have a look at this. Now they tell us, you know, reinforcement learning to a high complexity topic is not that trivial. We have challenges because remember, we have now a search and a reasoning scenario that we have to teach to our little LLM, to the poor little LLM. So what we have, it remains unclear how to effectively integrate the search engine into the reinforcement learning approach for the LLM. That's not so optimal. No, this is not what you want. Second, you have a problem with multi-turn interleaved reasoning and search because you have to dynamically adjust your retrieval strategy based on the complexity of the thematic problem. We have no idea how to do this. And then finally, the reward function, no? reinforcement learning. So the reward function for search and reasoning task remains a fundamental challenge. And if those universities tell you that this is a fundamental challenge, you can have a good impression <laughs> that this is not going to be easy. But luckily, luckily, we have something that we can orientate us. The authors of Search R1 tell us, you know, remember DeepSeq R10? Here, DeepSeq R10. This paper here from January 2025, this was kind of the base. Because they say we can see our Search R1 as an extension which primarily now focuses on the parametric reasoning by introducing search augmented reinforcement learning training for enhanced retrieval-driven decision-making. And now we integrate everything together. So they say, okay, so we have a reinforcement learning now with a search engine. And now that we added the complexity, so we have now the reinforcement learning objective function with a search engine, or is now written as following. This is the classical term that we always use, but now it gets interesting because now we do two uh, mechanisms, a PPO and a GRPO with the search engine. So we have here added a second dominating complexity that we have to fulfill in our learning process. PPO from 2017, great. So now they tell us here, and I just give you here the formula, involving the search engine, calling optimized LLM by maximizing the following objective. And here you have your PPO objective. Now it looks with the advantage and the clipping absolutely like the classical term, but do you notice there is a term I that is new? If we look at the GRPO formulation here, you will also find it is new term I. And this term I has a very specific reason and is really important in this theory. In two minutes, I will explain it in detail. But otherwise, you know, those are more or less with kuhlberg leibler with a beta parameter. This is what we have already learned about how to use RL. Now, the template for a search R1 is simple. You just tell the LLM, hey, answer the given question. You must conduct your reasoning inside the thinking tags every time you get new information. So after your reasoning, if you find you lack some knowledge, you can call a search engine by search, query, end of search, and it will return the top searched result between information and end of information. You can search as many times as you want. If you find no further external knowledge needed, you can directly provide your answer inside answer and end of answer without any detailed illustrations. And here's not a question. So you see, the template is rather simple if you have trained it on this. If you are unfamiliar with any of the mathematical notation or the symbols of what does it mean, pi theta, here I have a video where I explain in 52 minutes every symbol and every formula and why we built it in this way, what are the coefficients, why we have our numbers here and what does it mean. Great. Now, for the reward system itself, here for the R1 system, they say, you know, we go with the easiest. We go with a rule-based reward system that has only the final outcome rewards. Great. So this R1, search R1, now shows that we can use reinforcement learning to teach an LLM how to search and integrate the retrieved data into the reasoning process. 
And the authors tell us, you know what, the next step we will have more complex reward function, great. Adaptive retrieval strategies, great. And multi-tool and multi-modal integration and reasoning. But please note, Search Honor 1 is not just a simple agent that calls a tool or calls here the internet. It combines here the RAG architecture with and reinforcement learning train policy over when, how, and what to query. Treating here the search engine as part of the reinforcement learning environment itself. So this is quite a new paradigm. This is a new perspective how we see the system complexity, the architecture. Because at the beginning it was just a prompt-driven tool call. No? But now it involves something different. We want to have a self-learning system, so it must be a little bit, a little bit more interesting. No? So to a reinforcement learning optimized policy that interleaves now the generation and the retrieval of generation of information here, this is essential. No? This produces now different behavior on the strategy, on the adaptive querying, on the learned stopping and the query refinement process. And it requires new engineering because, as I will show you, we will have something like a retrieve token masking, a new Kuhlberg library regularization on specific tokens, and a multi turn rollout mechanisms for this to make the policy optimization stable and meaningful. So, this is nice. So, the model, the LLM, now learns what to ask, so the query phrasing when to ask, how many searches, in what order, and how to use the retrieved evidence in subsequent reasoning steps, rather than a single static retrieval from RAG. This is RAG, I don't know, 3.0. Nice. But remember, this is only for a single MCP tool use, the search engine. If you wanted a little bit more professional, of course, search or one differs here from a naive internet calling agent, because it learns via your classical policy optimization the decision process of when, what, and how to retrieve, and how to integrate the retrieved data, the retrieved evidence. And it will use here something we call loss masking and a new Kuhlberg library regularization to make it a reinforcement process feasible and stable, even when the retrieval step is non differentiable. Now, if you say, hey, what does it mean, non-differentiable? Here you have the simple explanation. Whenever the model emits a search end of search token, the systems run an external search engine and inserts the return text into the context. But this insertion is not produced by the model, and so you cannot compute the gradient through the retrieval operation. And you remember there's no smooth function from the model parameters to the retrieved text. So therefore, if you want in RL slang language, we say, the search is now an environment transaction, not a differentiable layer of the network. That's all there is to it. Now, if you would start here with a naive gradient-based optimization, without thinking about this mysterious type operator I that I showed you, we run into problems. Why? Because if you use this here in a policy gradient reinforcement learning for autoregressive LLM, you, comp you compute the log props here for generated tokens and weights, but if you treat the whole rollout, and this means the model tokens and the retrieve tokens in the same way, uniformly, the optimizer will try to change the model in a way that its token distribution assigns also now a high probability to the retrieve token as well, and not only to the model token. This has a negative effect. Why? Because now the LLM will learn or will try to mimic whatever the search returned. This means also the semantic text. But this is not what we want because the retrieved text wasn't produced by the policy and it may be noisy, it may be adversarial. So therefore optimizing toward this causes instability and a pathological behavior. So what we do? Where is the solution? I told you there is a beautiful solution. Yeah, the solution is loss masking. The authors tell us, you know what, we played around and we found a binary mask I. That simple process that equals 1 when the token was generated by the policy pi theta and is 0 when the token was inserted from the retrieval process. And you know what, we compute the policy objective only over the generated tokens. So therefore our gradients, our nabla j, are 0 for the retrieved tokens 
Therefore, <laughs> this means that the training updates we have, the policy gradients, never attempt to make it a model reproduce or overfit the retrieved passages. This explains it is mysterious type I that I showed you some minutes ago. A binary mask to identify specific tokens. But you know, they also found playing with the system that masking alone is necessary, a necessary condition, but it's not a sufficient condition. Because if we work with sparse rework and a noisy environment transitions, we have a high variance and this leads to unstable updates and maybe even a mode collapse. But we have a solution for this behavior. You know, the classical toolbox solution is a coolback libel regularization to anchor here the policy by data. The effect is it stabilizes the learning rate. So you see, we just reuse the tricks that we know, that we know it's working, and we use it here also on new topics. So here we achieved it now. The agent now learns how to query and how to reason at the same time with the retrieve content without being seduced into copying here the retrieve text or collapsing into some extreme behavior we're not looking for. What a nice idea. So loss masking means now to exclude the retrieve tokens from, I don't know, any rack system, any database, any internet structure, exclude the retrieve tokens from the policy gradient objective. And we achieve this with a binary mask. One, if the token was generated by the policy and zero if the token was inserted by the retrieval external data source. How simple, how elegant can it be? And then the mask policy gradient estimation becomes our classical term. Now, what I was thinking about, wait, but does it not have some influence here with this on the retrieve text? No? Because the model still conditions on the retrieve content when producing here the subsequent tokens, the next token prediction, because we, we add new external knowledge to the LLM because we need this additional knowledge. So does, the, does this not interfere in any way? And it turns out, no, this method is beautifully tuned just to have this mechanism. Now, if you use with PPO and the value function, careful. Because if you do PPO, your value function learning should also respect the masking to avoid any inconsistency. And if you look at the normalization, also careful if you code this, because average the loss only over the generated tokens. Otherwise, again, the gradient scale inconsistent as the number of retrieved token changes. And for the Kubek Liber regularizer interplay, again, the same thing, exclude the retrieved token from the Kubek Liber computation, since those retrieved tokens are not the outputs of either policy. But if you're respective <laughs> and you are careful about this, we get some beautiful results. So masking removes the gradient signal that would try to make the model reproduce the retrieved passages. But the retrieve passages itself, they still alter the model's input and therefore influence the subsequent generated token probabilities. So the information that we retrieve from this new rack is integrated into the reasoning process. But it is not steering via the gradient optimization the behavior of the model because it understands it has not to train on the content only because it has to be trained on when to go to a tool use, how to do it, how to operate it, and how to best handle the result that comes back. So the gradients through those generated token teach the model both how to use the retrieve content and which queries tend to produce here helpful retrievals. But you know that this was just a warm-up for the next video. This was just here to get a good idea, a good starting ground. Because in the next video... We will jump here a little bit to the next complexity level because we will not only work anymore with a search engine, a single tool, but we will move to a complete multitude of rack systems. But more about this in my next video.